This is the OnePlus Nord CE4 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the back plastic cover. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Now there are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. At this point, a plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and ran along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing is also made of plastic. There's an area of graphite film to help transfer heat. The dual LED flash is located here. And there's some antenna flex cables on this side, as well as one over here. Looking at the other side, we see additional antenna flex cables around the border. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The coaxial cable located on the bottom right side of the board can be disconnected by just popping it off. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the main board. Taking a look at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel primary camera as well as the 8 megapixel ultra wide. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. As for the camera connectors, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone underneath this shield, some graphite film here to help transfer heat, as well as rubber gaskets around these connectors. On the other side, we can see the 16 megapixel front facing camera, an infrared or IR blaster located next to that, as well as copper tape, graphite film, and thermal paste to help transfer heat. Now that the graphite film has been peeled back, we see a thermal pad and thermal paste on top of the ROM or storage, RAM, and processor. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. This is the 5,500 milliamp hour dual cell battery, with each cell consisting of 2,750 milliamp hours. It also looks like they forgot to put the K for the PBK. 
The screen cable is located on the bottom corner of the subboard. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws in the back housing, you'd then have to disconnect the screen cable as well as these flex cables and remove the subboard, giving you access to the rubber gasket and the flex cable for the screen, at which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. These two flex cables connect the main board to the subboard. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard. This is the bottom speaker assembly. There's a mesh filter and rubber gasket over the opening of the speaker. And here's the speaker itself. So looking at the subboard, we see rubber gaskets around the connectors, as well as the charger port. The primary microphone is located here, underneath the shield. The SIM and memory card reader is located on the other side. The x-axis linear or vibrator motor is located here, which is held on with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. The same goes for the fingerprint sensor located next to that. There's also a small antenna board on the bottom corner. Once the battery adhesive pouch has been peeled back, we have a better look at the large vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located on this side. To replace that, just gently peel it off the frame. The proximity sensor is located on the top, and next to that is the earpiece speaker which is also held down with some adhesive. Now when it comes to this phone, there are primary rubber gaskets and mesh filters over the microphone openings, which are seated above the holes, and there are also secondary rubber gaskets and filters, which are seated against the holes on the frame. So if you were to accidentally insert the stim ejector tool in the wrong holes, you would probably end up damaging the filters which are seated against the frame. However, there is a second rubber gasket and filter, which are seated above the holes inside of the phone on the frame. Now for the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. The back cover is pretty easy to pry off, and pretty much all of the components inside the phone are fairly easy to remove and replace. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.